Tonight in Y News. Strong earthquake rattles Quezon Town, tremor felt in Metro Manila and parts of Luzon. More than a dozen of dead pigs found floating in bodies of water in Marikina and Quezon City. Malacanang insurers' heads will roll when truth about irregularities in the Bureau of Corrections comes out. Rookie teams SSS Kabalikat and DENR Warriors to debut on Sunday in UNTV Cup Season 8. And there's something new with DJ Adam on Wish FM's Moonlight Wishes for Wishers to Express Their Feelings and serenade a loved one. Good evening. A magnitude 5.5 earthquake jolted parts of Quezon Province and neighboring areas this afternoon. According to the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology of FIVOX, the tectonic quake struck at 4.28 p.m. with a depth of 10 kilometers. Its epicenter was located 40 kilometers northeast of Bordeos Town in Quezon Province. A moderately strong intensity 4 was felt in Jose Pangaliban, Camarines Norte, and Quezon City. Intensity 3 was felt in Ginyangan, Quezon Province. An instrumental intensity 3 was recorded in Tagaytay City and Quezon City. FIVOS Director Renato Solidum said no damage have been reported as of yet because of the quake. Tremors were felt in Metro Manila and nearby provinces and buildings were evacuated, including schools, some of which announced a suspension of classes. Metro Manila train lines LRT2 and MRT3 suspended operations because of the quake. Meanwhile, FIVOX monitoring recorded a magnitude 5.1 aftershock in the same area at around 5.18 p.m. The quake was felt in more areas, intensity 5 in Polilio, Quezon, sit, or intensity 4 in Quezon City, and intensity 2 in Ginayangan, Quezon. The Philippine National Police urged the public to reach out if in need of assistance. Agriculture Secretary William Dar appeals to hog racers to coordinate with authorities in properly disposing of dead pigs. Harleen Delgado clarifies why. These pictures of over 30 bloated dead pigs were taken at the Marikina River yesterday. According to Marikina City authorities, these carcasses did not come from within the city since they no longer have slaughterhouses. The dead hogs might have been taken by current from somewhere in Rizal, says Marikina City Mayor Marcelino Teodoro. According to Agriculture Secretary William Dar, they have found out that some hog racers hid their hog animals due to the African swine fever scare. Maki cooperate po tayo, yung mga backyard hog racers. Otherwise, pinapalala natin ang problema. We are spreading the virus and this is what is happening, uh, dumping these dead pigs in the uh, uh, river. Meanwhile, the Land Bank of the Philippines will offer up to 30,000 peso loan with zero interest, payable up to three years for every ASF-affected hog racers. This will come from a 16 million peso fund. The Department of Budget and Management will release 82.5 million pesos for ASF prevention. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue, Kazan City. 100 more Bureau of Customs employees may soon be flagged for corrupt practices as hinted by President Rodrigo Duterte. Malacanang insurers heads will roll because of the irregularities at the Bureau of Corrections. Rosalie Cos details why. For President Rodrigo Duterte, corrupt government employees are a burden to the country. He is now searching for around 100 more Bureau of Customs personnel for their alleged involvement in anomalies. This aside from the customs employees who have been placed on floating status due to corruption allegations. At itong customs, I was given a list of 164. They have been there already for 38 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years. Sabi nung taong napisa, an ex-employee of the uh, customs. Itong mga tao na ito, mayor, 
Kung matanggal mo ito, mahawala ang corruption sa lugar. In the meantime that I am investigating the 64, I think they were already suspended by the Ombudsman, I'm still trying to look for this 100 idiots, this son of a Meanwhile, after reports have surfaced that even the name of tagged Port Battle Queen Janet Napoles is among the beneficiaries of GCTA but with rape case, Malacanang ensures heads will roll because of the irregularities at the Bureau of Corrections. As we have said, <clears throat> let the investigation proceed and let the truth come out and thereafter heads will roll. The president wants the probe into the irregularities in Bucor and the new believed prison to continue in order to find the people responsible. Pero kung sabihin mo na bayaran, that is another story. I will hit you not because the law was in the limbo, but because of corruption. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanya. Former Philippine National Police Criminal Investigation and Detection Group Chief Benjamin Magalang will face Senate in the next hearing on the alleged anomalies in the Bureau of Corrections. He says he is ready to cooperate to shed light to the issues hounding Bucor. Nina Amirio details why. Former CIDG Chief Benjamin Magalong reveals his group persevered and spent quite a huge amount to find out the personalities behind the rampant illegal drugs trade inside the New Belibid prison. Kami yung talagang nagtrabaho ng husto to develop yung kaso at na-identify nga namin kung sino yung mga involved dun sa Bucor pagdating sa itong negosyo sa droga. Kaya... Uh, nagtataka lang kami bakit nung pagdating na doon sa actual na uh, raid, eh, bigla na kami hindi na isama. Magalong was pertaining to a 2014 raid in Bilibid after they received information on the illicit drug transactions in the penitentiary. This is just one of the incidents he will bring up during the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee hearing on the alleged anomalies in Bucor on Thursday. Hindi naman ako pwedeng magsalita ng basta-basta dahil nga ongoing yung litigation ng kaso. Pero magiging factual lang ako kung ano lang ang alam ko, personal knowledge lang tungkol sa nangyari doon. Yun siguro ang maipapaliwanag ko during the hearing of Senator Gordon. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. There are only six days left before the 15-day grace period President Rodrigo Duterte has given heinous crime convicts released through GCTA to surrender. The PNP CIDG have alerted their tracker teams nationwide to run after those who won't yield. Lea Ilagan tells us why. The Philippine National Police Criminal Investigation and Detection Group or PNP CIDG have prepared 121 tracker teams. Its team, composed of five personnel, has been tasked to launch manhunt operations when the grace period lapses against the ex-cons who will not voluntarily surrender to authorities on or before September 19. We organized the teams of the CIDG in the regional offices in the provincial city. Balba adds their tracker teams are now studying the list to locate the freed convicts. Even before the deadline, tumutulong na tayo sa pag-update at saka meron din namang mga nagsusurrender sa atin. In fact, as of today, makapagtalat na tayo ng mga 47 surrenderies sa CIBG. Some of the 47 convicts have already been turned over to the Bureau of Corrections. He also confirms they already have a list with addresses. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue, Camp Krame. The signing ceremony for the revised Implementing Rules and Regulations of the Good Conduct Time Allowance or GCTA law is tentatively on Monday. Meanwhile, the Secretary of Justice indicates the possible review of the Charter of the Bureau of Corrections. Nelmarie Buhok reports why. 
Under Secretary Mark Perete says the Joint Review Committee have completed their job and submitted the draft IRR to the Secretaries of Department of Justice and Department of the Interior and Local Government. The committee will ask the DILG and DOJ secretaries to give them extension to review and recommend revision on the manual and guidelines for the implementation of Republic Act No. 10592, the most debated issue and what some lawmakers insist is the exemption of heinous crime convicts in the GC. CTA, and this may be included in the revised IRR. Meanwhile, Justice Secretary Menardo Guevara thinks of recommending a review of the Charter of the Bu Corps. The Secretary is referring to Republic Act 10575, which he says supposedly strengthened the Bu Corps and consequently diminished DOJ control over it. Currently, the DOJ only has administrative supervision of the BUCOR. The same law is used by BUCOR to justify their assertion that their decision on the release of high-profile inmates do not need prior approval from the DOJ secretary. The Justice Department wants to claim back some form of control over BUCOR. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. As the UNTV Cup Season 8 continues on Sunday, three matches are in store with the rookie teams and a former title holder to watch out for. Vincent Arboleda tells us why. In the first game, one of the newest additions in the league, the DENR Warriors will prove what they've got as they face the furious GSI Furies on September 15 at 2 p.m. Kilala namin yung bawat isa sa amin. Kilala namin yung magagawa ng bawat sa amin. Isa sa amin, matagal na kami nagkakasamang naglalaro-laro. Siguro naman bibigyan namin ng magandang laro yung mga makakalaban namin. Uh, siguro mas competitive kami ngayon. Tsaka mas nagpa-condition kami. Talagang pinagandaan namin ito ngayon season 8. Tsaka by additional of uh, players. In the second game, another rookie team, SSS Kabalikat, will play the Ombudsman Draft Busters. Basta kami maglalaro lang ng parehas, uh, malinis, at pipilitin namin sa bawat laro namin na bibigay namin yung best namin. And at 5 p.m., Season 5 title holder PNP Responders and Season 7 third placer NHA Builders will battle it out in an expected action-packed third game. In the battle for the third last season, the Builders ended the PNP's campaign to the championship and took home 1 million pesos for their chosen beneficiaries. Yung off-season namin talagang naging sayo kami maigi para maging competitive kami at maabot namin yung goal namin na number one. Sunday's triple header will emanate live from Pasig City Sports Center with live streaming via UNTV's Facebook page and UNTVweb.com. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue. Welcome back to Y News. We pick up from where Angela Lagunzad left off by Mangelo Castro III, and here are the headlines. 277 Chinese nationals wanted for fraud are arrested in a massive raid in Pasig City. Police name the owners of two getaway vehicles in the ambush of former Pangasinan Governor Amado Espina, Espino Jr. The House of Representatives approves a bill that seeks to reduce the income tax for businesses on the third and final reading. Big-time oil price hike is seen next week. Premium rice from Mindanao will soon be exported to Papua New Guinea. Good evening. The Bureau of Immigration arrested almost 300 Chinese nationals in a raid in a corporate center in Pasig City on Wednesday. Aiko Miguel reports why. This is a video footage taken by UNTV News of five buses loaded with scores of Chinese nationals in front of the BI office in Manila City yesterday. They are Chinese nationals the Bureau of Immigration arrested on September 11. 
When the BI personnel entered the corporate building to conduct a massive raid, they incidentally nabbed 273 Chinese nationals who were conducting illegal online operations. Authorities found them to be undocumented. All are wanted personalities in China. The BI have filed appropriate charges against them. They are now detained in the warden facility in Taguig City. BI Commissioner Jaime Morente said they have initially issued an arrest order against four Chinese fugitives involved in economic crimes in China. The arrest order was based on information sent by the Chinese embassy on the presence of the suspects in the Philippines. Morente assures this wanted Chinese fugitive will be hunted, deported and blacklisted, effectively banning them from re-entering our country. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Philippine National Police have identified the alleged owners of vehicles used by the suspects in the ambush of former Pangasinan Governor Amado Espino Jr. Police have yet to determine the motive of the incident. April Senadosa reports why. Actually po, na kuha natin po na yung ilan trapo ay nakapangalan kay certain Marivic Villanueva at ang Fort Everest naman po ay nakapangalan kay John Paul Regalado. As police now have the identities of the registered owners of the cars used during the attack on Espino Jr., authorities believe these persons will be a big help in the case. They are not, however, considered as suspects. Police Lieutenant Colonel Mary Crystal Peralta of the PR01 Public Information Office clarifies. Peralta adds, police are still looking for another car, allegedly used by lookouts of the suspects. PNP spokesman, Police Brigadier General Bernard Banak, says they are looking at all angles, such as his previous government work and campaign against illegal drugs. Ang lahat ng ito ay uh, tinitingnan ng mga posibleng angulo, pero sa ngayon, wala pa naman talagang matukoy kung ano talagang dahilan. In 2016, Espino was dragged into President Rodrigo Duterte's drug matrix. He was removed from the list. As President Duterte mentioned, there was a mistake. Maring uh, may mga sindikato na maring ding uh, naapektuhan ng kanyang kampanya na yan. Espino is now in stable condition. However, last night, Espino's driver Agapito Kison died due to gunshot wounds. April Senadoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. The Manila Electric Company will charge their consumers less in the coming months. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. Meralco signed a power supply agreement with three power generation companies today. The power supply agreement will provide for additional 1,200 megawatt supply of electricity to Meralco. According to Attorney Ray Espinosa, the president of the electric power distributor, the three companies will collect lower generation charges from them than the current average generation of 5.88 per kilowatt hour. The three companies will start supplying Meralco on December 26, 2019. Espinosa assures that should the price of fuel increase, the cost will not be passed on to consumers. It's time for the consumers to be spared from managing that fuel risk. The agreement will still be subject to Energy Regulatory Commission's regulatory proceedings and evaluation. We, we intend to file with the, with the ERC naman within, I think, within seven days from the signing of the PSA. Oh, okay. Because of the lower generation cost, Meralco expects savings of up to 9.46 billion pesos annually for 10 years. Expect your Meralco bills in the next months to be lower by 28 centavos per kilowatt hour. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasig City. After three weeks of continuous price rollbacks, oil companies will implement a big-time oil price hike next week. Industry players say there, there will be an 80 to 95 centavos per liter price hike on diesel, while the price of gasoline is expected to rise by 1 peso and 20 centavos to 1 peso and 40 centavos per liter. The big-time oil price hike is caused by the movement of the price of crude in the world market. The House of Representatives began today the plenary deliberations of the 4.1 trillion peso proposed 2020 national budget. From the obligation-based budgeting system, the government will shift 
to a cash-based budgeting system. What are the differences between the obligation-based and cash-based budgeting systems? Let's find out as Joan Nano reports. The government in the previous years had been operating under an obligation-based budgeting system. But President Rodrigo Duterte has signed Executive Order No. 91, adopting the cash-based budgeting system beginning this year. Under the cash-based budgeting system, contractual obligations will be limited. An implementing agency should complete a contract of a certain project within the fiscal year. Funds allotted for projects and programs that will not be implemented within a year will be terminated from the proposed budget. Payments for various products and services obtained by the government should be made within the fiscal year. Unlike the obligation-based system, in which an agency can enter a project contract that has yet to be paid or implemented within a year, an agency can also spend in the current year events without budget allocation but they can reimburse it the following year. For the Makabayan Bloc, it is not important whether it is cash or obligation-based budgeting system. Ang uh, mahalaga sa amin, ano ba yung nilalaman ng budget na yan? At paano ito ginugugol? No? Uh, paano nito sinasalamin yung pangangailangan ng ating mamamayan? Kasi may advantages and disadvantages yan. Theoretically, sabi nila, mas maganda ang cash-based budgeting dahil nakikita talaga, binabayaran lang natin kung ano yung talagang na-deliver. But... It's, uh, sa konteksto ng Pilipinas, it's easier said than done. No? House Appropriations Committee Chair Representative Isidro Ungab has turned down the request of several other congressmen for around 90 billion pesos fund out of the proposed national budget for various infrastructure projects within the respective districts. Congressman Ungab argues it is very hard to adjust the budget under the cash-based system. Mahirap talaga kasi right now, itemize eh, in cash-based budgeting, no? Mahirap mag-commit kasi with the uh, presence uh, procedure na cash-based budgeting na at saka yung itemized na and uh, gaan, ando na. Because it's your gaan, which is already the allotment order. Eh. So, diretsyo na yun. Pag ginawala, ginawala mo yun, apektado na rin yung allotment mo. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. With a vote of 170 yeses and 8 noes and 6 abstentions, the House of Representatives approved today on third and final reading the Corporate Income Tax and Incentive Rationalization Act or CITIRA. This is the second package of the tax reform for acceleration and inclusion or TRAIN 2. Under this bill, the corporate income tax will be lowered to 20% from the current 30%. The 2% reduction in the corporate income tax will begin on 2021 until it is reduced to 20%. Businesses who will create more jobs will be given more incentives. Companies who will establish and promote their operations in the provinces will also benefit from additional incentives. DAR adds the DA has instituted an anti-boarding task force that will cooperate with Bureau of Customs to go after rice hoarders. Meanwhile, the government will lend money to small-time farmers with zero interest. Harleen Delgado reports why. Starting today until next month, the National Food Authority will flood the markets in Metro Manila and key provinces with over 3 million bags of imported rice. But when Agriculture Secretary William Dar inspected rice stalls in Commonwealth Market and San Andres Market, he noticed there was not much imported rice sold. The Department of Agriculture is now looking into possible rice hoarders in the country. We have yet to see more of this out in the market. Kung nagmamanis sila at hindi sapat yung supply sa mercado, then there is some sort of hoarding. But rice retailer Ernest Lito Lazaro believes there are no rice hoarders as of the moment. For him, consumers still prefer local rice than imported rice because of its quality. Masarap talaga bigas po natin eh, kaysa dun sa imported eh. Eh, ang masarap lang naman na bigas sa imported eh, jasmine. There has been 2.4 million tons of rice imports in the country since the rice tarification law took effect this year. With the anticipated flooding of NFA rice, the Secretary expects the commercial rice prices to go down at 35 to 37 pesos per kilo. In some markets, the price of well-milled rice is 40 to 44 pesos per kilo. 
Meanwhile, the Land Bank of the Philippines will offer a zero-interest loan to rice farmers who till land one hectare and below. Farmers can avail up to 15,000 pesos, payable up to eight years. Maghahanap ang gobyerno para masiguro na matulungan po natin ang mga magsasakang maliliit. But the DA admits the 2.5 billion peso loan program is not enough to help the 600,000 small-scale farmers nationwide. Harleen Delgado, UN TV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Mindanao has produced export quality rice and as soon as documents are ready, thousands of metric tons of rice will be shipped to Papua New Guinea. Ipelayo details why. 5,000 metric tons of rice harvested in Mindanao is ready for exportation. Mindanao Development Authority or Minda Secretary Manny Pinola says the rice is organic and premium. He adds the Philippines cannot compete with the ordinary rice from Thailand and Vietnam. But it's a different story when it comes to special rice. Bakit? Saan ba galing yung jasmine rice ng Thailand? Yan ay ating milagrosa na kinuhan na dinevelop nila at ginawang jasmine rice. This move, Secretary Pinol said, will benefit farmers in Mindanao who are also affected by the lowering Palay Farm gate price due to the implementation of the rice liberalization law. Minda will serve as coordinator between companies and cooperatives in Mindanao and markets abroad. Minda is looking for other markets in Hong Kong, the Middle East, and the United States. The official adds it is high time for Filipinos to shift and patronize organic rice which is chemical free. Not only will they be consuming healthy food, they will also be helping our Filipino farmers. The Department of Agriculture is willing to support the program. A magandang balita yon kung totoo. They have to coordinate naman para mas uh, suporta pa tayo. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. President Rodrigo Duterte has directed the PNP Highway Patrol Group to provide escort to ambulances so they can transport patients fast despite heavy flow of traffic on EDSA. Find out the recent developments after the president made the order. Let's watch this. I will ask all itong lahat na Metro Manila, Metro Manila uh, Highway Patrol pag may emergency pag may nakita sila ng siren tapos hilain na lang nakita mo yung kita mo yung hmm, tapos eh, parang uh, hagad sir ganun pa uh, escort pa hilain nila itabi nila para makalusot and maybe that would be a mandatory work for them this is the order of President Rodrigo Duterte to the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority and the PNP Highway Patrol Group as the issue of patients dying inside ambulances stuck in EDSA traffic arise. The UNTV News team have made rounds to observe the situation in some parts of EDSA. In Cubao Aurora area, this ambulance had difficulty passing through an underpass due to heavy traffic. This ambulance was able to drive fast through the service road going to Aurora eastbound after being given escorts. Ambulances plying the EDSA Q-Mart area were also able to drive fast. The HPG advised ambulance operators and drivers plying EDSA to coordinate and call their hotline to avoid being stuck in traffic. Basta narinig natin yung ano nila, yung uh, siren nila at may nag-coordinate dito sa intersection kung saan sila manggagaling na way, pinibigyan natin sila ng priority para sila mapakuna. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Quezon City government removes the 10-year-old monument of late Senator Ninoy Aquino. The Aquino family have given their permission to the relocation of the statue. Maya Bermudez will tell us why. Quezon City Mayor Joy Belmonte was the one who talked to the Aquinos about the relocation of the decade-old tribute to the late Benigno Ninoy Aquino Jr. A portion of the road where the monument stands has been damaged by a road widening project of the Department of Public Works and Highways. Timog Avenue in Quezon City is not a good spot for a monument, says Quezon City Traffic Czar Attorney Ariel Inton. What's the problem? They understand it because uh, as you can see, 
yun national government ang ano dito pagka ito nakita mo ko liniet hindi na talaga magandang lugar para sa isang monumento ang timo But until the family have not given their final decision, the statue will be temporarily moved to Quezon City X Museum in Quezon City Circle. Latinos have two other options. One, dito sa Ninoy Aquino Park, no, as suggested by former President Ninoy Aquino, and another suggestion coming from Chris Aquino, which is sa Ayala. As for the clearing operations in QC, city government says, Public roads are 70% cleared. My Bermudez, UNGB News and Rescue, Quezon City. And for the news abroad, a deadly fire broke out at Rio de Janeiro Hospital Thursday night, forcing staff to hastily evacuate patients and temporarily settle some on sheets and mattresses in the street while firefighters battled the blaze. Fire officials said the fire was under control at Badim Hospital, but one person had died. Staffers in surgical masks wheeled medical equipment in the road as smoke billowed from the building. Elderly and intensive care patients were among those rescued. Many patients were transferred to other medical facilities, some accompanied by anxious family members. Authorities said there were, they were investigating the cause. Outside observers will not be allowed without permission inside tent courts in South Texas where the Trump administration is processing thousands of, thousands of migrants forced to wait in Mexico. Judith Anna Nofuente details why. Tent courts are set to open in Laredo and Brownsville, Texas to help process asylum seekers crossing the border from Mexico. The first hearings under the so-called Remain in Mexico program began Wednesday in Laredo, Texas. A small number of migrants will have hearings before the tents in Laredo and Brownsville officially open next week. The process will start at the front door. Uh, we'll have officers uh, verifying in our systems. Uh, we will use biometrics to ensure that the person in front of us is actually the person that's been scheduled a hearing. Once they clear the initial uh, process of ident ident identity, we'll pass them over to those tables over there. Any baggage that they have with them will be searched. They will get tagged and it will be stored away until they are ready to leave the facility. The Remain program, which the U.S. ramped up this summer with Mexico's cooperation, has been credited by American officials as driving down the number of migrant apprehensions at the southern border, a key goal of President Donald Trump. But immigration advocates say they're concerned people seeking asylum and other migrants will be denied fair hearings. U.S. officials on Wednesday said outside observers, including the news media, will not be allowed into the tents without permission. Immigration judges will hold hearings remotely. The officials said that if attorneys have formally agreed to represent migrants, they will be allowed to attend hearings in person. However, they said outside attorneys who routinely observe immigration proceedings will not be allowed at the hearings. More than 40,000 migrants have been told to wait for their immigration court dates in Mexico since the program went into effect this year. Judith Ana Fuente, UNTV News and Rescue. Russia has asked the United States via Interpol to confirm the whereabouts of a former Kremlin official who Russian media have said may have been a U.S. spy exfiltrated in 2017. Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova made the comment after U.S. media reports confirmed to Reuters by two sources said a CIA informant, informant in the Russian government had been extracted and brought to the United States in 2017. Russian daily newspaper Komersant has said that the official may have been a man called Oleg Smolenkov. He was reported to have disappeared with his wife Antonina and three children while on holiday in Montenegro in June 2017. Zakharova said that Russia had opened a criminal case after their disappearance and had now learned via the media that Smolenkov and his family were in the United States. A French court has found the only daughter of Saudi Arabia's King Salman guilty of complicity in violence for ordering her bodyguard to detain and strike a plumber for taking photos at the Saudi royal family's apartment in Paris. 
Kath Dumraos has the details. The daughter of the king of Saudi Arabia was complicit in beating up and briefly kidnapping a workman in her luxury flat in Paris, a French court ruled on Thursday, sentencing the princess to a 10-month suspended prison sentence. Speaking after the verdict, Princess Hassa bin Salman's French lawyer said most of the declarations made by workman Ashraf Eid were false and that an appeal would be lodged. According to the initial indictment, Ashraf Eid told police that the princess's bodyguard bound his hands, punched and kicked him and forced him to kiss the princess's feet after she accused him of filming her on his cell phone. He told investigators his phone was forcibly taken from him and that as he was being beaten, Princess Hassa had treated him like a dog. My client had the force to resist all the long of the instruction judiciary. My client had the strength to withstand the length of the investigation. He was right to put his fate in the court. At the judgment hearing, I had the impression that the court was extremely sensitive to the seriousness of the events. So I was hopeful and I was completely confident. Today we have a decision through which the court applied the principle of equal justice for all. Defense lawyer Emmanuel Moyni disputed the court's conclusions. The princess, 43, sister of Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, has consistently denied any wrongdoing through her lawyers. She was not in court for the verdict. Kat Dumara, LCU and TV News and Rescue. Scientists announced on Wednesday that two embryos of northern white rhinos were successfully fertilized in a lab in Italy, which is a step forward to saving the functionally extinct species. Mirasol Abogadil has the story. After Sudan, the last male northern white rhino at the age of 45 died in March of 2018. His daughter Nadine and granddaughter Fatou became the only two remaining white rhinos on Earth and they are currently under 24-hour guard in all Peheta Conservancy in Kenya. Fatou's keeper Zakaraya Mutai, who had attended other northern white rhinos and seen them die off, called for international efforts to prevent the endangered species from going completely extinct. Yeah, we need a collaboration of uh, all people to make sure these animals are not uh, going to an extinct at some point. On August 22nd this year, scientists and conservationists from Italy, Germany and the Czech Republic successfully harvested 10 eggs from Nadine and Fatu, with 7 extracted eggs successfully inseminated with frozen sperm from two different northern white rhino bulls, Sunni and Sawut, on August 25th. After 10 days, two embryos were successfully created, representing a turning point for the northern white rhino's fate. The two precious embryos are now preserved in liquid nitrogen and will be transferred into female southern white rhinos for surrogacy in the near future. Mirasol Abogadil, UNTV News and Rescue. Free divers descend to depths of over 100 meters at the Free Diving, Diving, Free Diving World Championships in France. Nina Armilio reports. Russian free diver Alexei Molchanov descended to a depth of 118 meters in more than four minutes without taking a breath in a world free diving competition held on Tuesday on the French Riviera. The Ida Depth World Championship gathers divers from around the world from September 2 to 15 in Villa Franche Surmer on a 400 square meter offshore platform in the Mediterranean Sea. An eight time champion, Moshinov holds the constant weight free diving world record of 130 meters, which is set in the Bahamas in 2018. The 32-year-old Volgograd native has won 18 medals in world championship events and set 12 world records. So uh, it felt great. I've had a good warm-up and uh, the dive was amazing. Like it was very relaxing, very, uh, very confident. I felt very confident. French diver Abdelatif Alouak honed his free diving skills as a longtime competitive spare fisher. He specializes in diving with no propulsion equipment. So we are really into the execution, immersed between ourselves and what we are doing. 
Divers can compete in different disciplines in the two-week championship. Free divers must not only master breath-holding techniques, but also equalization, relaxation, minimal movements, and how to use body weight for propulsion. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. Tokyo 2020 organizers sprinkled artificial snow on spectators at its test event on Friday in a bid to keep visitors cool in blistering temperatures expected during next year's Olympic and Paralympic Games. Artificial snow is the latest stratagem being considered to counter high humidity and summer temperatures that commonly exceed 30 degrees Celsius in July and August when the Games are scheduled in the Japanese capital. After testing the machine for 10 minutes at its canoeing test event, an, or an organizing committee staff member said that the machine wouldn't necessarily cool down temperatures, but that it gives a cooling feeling to visitors. Tokyo organizers have tried other measures, such as vapor sprays, having shaded or air-conditioned rest areas, and distributing water and ice packs at a beach volleyball test event in July. Are you hesitant and shy to express your feelings to the one you love? Wish FM can help you send out messages of love, hope, and many other feelings through its newest segment, Parana. Find out why from Monokson. Is serenading still an in thing? With Wish FM, it is. Prepare to be in love through Harana on Moonlight Wishes. Parang ibinabalik lang natin yung kulturang Pilipino na harana pero in a different manner na ito yung parang modern way of doing it through WISH 107.5 ay uh, hindi ka pagbubuksan ng bintana kung hindi pagbubuksan ka ng radyo. Request a song to serenade the person you miss, the person you care for, the person you love, whether at home, in your city, in another province, or even a different country. Pwedeng yung nanay mo, haranahin mo to, to say sorry kung may nagawa kang pagkukulang. Pwede yung best friend mo, kaibigan mo, o yung mga mahal mo sa buhay na nasa abroad, uh, pwede mo silang haranahin. Songs are not just music and lyrics, but are an expression of many different feelings. Alam mo kasi maraming mga laman talaga ang mga songs na kung minsan, yun yung gusto mong sabihin but uh, in a different manner dahil nasa kanta nga siya. So, ang Wish 107.5 ay uh, nagbibigay ng chance ngayon para magamit yung airwaves to at least parang mag-make meds kung merong mga uh, uh, nag-aaway o uh, para bang ano, a way of saying sorry, a way of saying I love you, a way of saying I miss you, hmm. a way of saying uh, I am longing for you. Diba? Parang uh, different messages that you wanted to say uh, through a song. Express your feelings through a thoughtful song by sending your request to 0949-362-3333. Type your name, your Harana song, the name of the person you wish to dedicate the song to, and their contact numbers. Every day, Wish FM will choose a lucky wisher to get a chance to express their love on air from midnight to 5 in the morning on Moonlight Wishes with DJ Adam. Monhokson, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news this September 13, 2019. On behalf of Angela Lagunza, I am Angelo Castro III. And before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know. We will always ask why. Good evening. Makikooperate po tayo yung mga backyard hog racers. Otherwise, pinapalala natin ang problema. We are spreading the virus, and this is what is happening: uh, dumping these dead pigs in the uh, uh, river. Pero kung sabihin mo na bayaran, that is another story. I will hit you not because the law was in the limbo, but because of corruption. Kami yung talagang nagtrabaho ng husto. 
to develop yung kaso at na-identify nga namin kung sino yung mga involved doon sa Bucor pagdating sa itong negosyo sa droga. Kaya uh, nagtataka lang kami bakit nung pagdating na doon sa actual na uh, raid, eh, bigla na kami hindi na isama. Yes. Parang ibinabalik lang natin yung kulturang Pilipino na harana pero in a different way na ito yung parang modern way of doing it through WISH 1075 ay uh, hindi ka pagbubuksan ng bintana kung hindi pagbubuksan ka ng radyo.